Hello everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 32, where it is written. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, and he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. For when the grain is ripe, at once he goes with the sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Yep, I know how Europe became a Christian civilization. The Messiah came as the Roman emperor and declared with all of his power and authority, Rome will now be Christian. Wait a minute, that's not what happened. Jesus Christ was a nobody from a backwater province, a minority that lived as a refugee as a kid to survive and was unheard of uh, in his lifetime outside of the small Jewish community in which he lived. And he uh, had what the Romans considered a cult for 300 years. And then by God, the Roman Empire became Christian. And the, the, why did Europe become a Christian? Because St. Paul, a celebrity or a famous scholar among the Jewish community, and unheard of everywhere else, went to uh, Greece went to Athens to debate, and some people believed him. The great saint, St. Francis of Assisi, he had this, wow, he was the most powerful guy on earth. He was the cardinal, he was the pope, and said, I'm going to change the church. No, he was just a mystical kid from a small Italian town who had um, heard from a crucifix, Francis, rebuild my church. The point being, as far as human history is concerned, these weren't big movers. They weren't big shakers. They were nobodies that did small things. But by God, the small things ended up changing the world and planting the faith. And so it is with us today. We're not well-known, famous pastors, priests, or whatever, or missionaries. We're everyday people. In our everyday lives, this is the front line. We've been in dark spots. We came to Christ. He forgave us and gave us new life. The same new life we have can come to anyone. They can repent, come to faith as well. But how will they know? Unless in the course of our daily lives, in our own little ways, through kindness, that nice word, that compliment, that helping someone out, that gets people interested. They see our lives transfigured by Christ, the interest grows, until finally it's ready to let them know who Jesus is and what he's done. The church, the 300 years, was nobody's. We still are nobody, strictly speaking. Only somebody is Christ. But we let people know. Knowing that in the small ways, from the first century all through the Middle Ages to the present, those small little things have always, always spread the, fight, the faith. So instead of all being uh, nobodies, we're all somebodies. Because we belong to Christ. And he says we're somebody. So it is. Our daily life is of unbelievable cosmic importance because the creator of the universe saw fit to give it to us to make him known our lives are unbelievably valuable and they're not to be squandered and while we don't know uh, in the long run after our time on earth what good we have done we just know it will be done and people the church after us will build on the foundation and since these are our descendants we want to give them a good inheritance so to speak so we stay strong in the faith, and we stay evangelizing, knowing it will mean a good outcome. Let us close with prayer. Lord, please help us to evangelize the faith. Help us to spread the faith around in our daily lives. Amen.